Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. We are getting ready to take on the Philadelphia Eagles on Monday night. It is Friday afternoon. Uh, we're talking about practice, and unfortunately, the Cowboys, we have had what, what can only be described as some bad luck when it comes to COVID. It is really insane how many players we have lost time due to COVID. And we just got Randy Gregory back. We know we got Keanu O'Neill who had a close contact. We may get him back. We may get him back um, because he was unvaccinated. He has to sit out for five days and get tested each of those days. And if after those five days he has all negative tests, he'll be eligible to play Monday night. So there's hope for him thus far. We haven't heard about any positive tests or anything else because I guarantee if we had, we would have already heard that he is out. Um, but now we have another player that's just been added to the list, and that's Bradley and I. Okay, now Bradley and I, you'll say, well, Bradley doesn't play that much, so maybe it's not that bad. But the problem is, what the Cowboys are doing is they're doing a rotation of players. They're sending wave after wave and wearing down teams. And you can see how, well, somebody let the dog out. Yeah, yeah they let the dog out. Um, what you can see is, like, for example, Micah Parsons only played like 39 snaps. But they're really key snaps because you bring in a fresh body, you can rotate them in, they can play against a guy who's been out there playing play after play after play. So you don't want to lose any of your rotation. Fortunately, we do have guys to rely on. Like I said, getting back Randy Gregory helps us out tremendously. Micah Parsons being able to play linebacker as well as defensive end helps out tremendously. But, you know, we can't keep having every week losing a player or two to COVID. It's just not a recipe for Wittick. Now, for us, of course, we're getting ready. we got some home cooking. We have an extra day to get ready for this game. The Eagles, who, in Philadelphia, shout out to you, man. Philadelphia, you know, you, you put it out there last night that it was the secret sauce that they're playing on running at Micah Parsons. Okay, that sounds great and all. It sounds, you know, everything sounds good when you're making a plan. Rarely do you make a plan and say, man, this is, this is an ass plan. This shit ain't going to work. This is just going to blow up. You never say that about plans, but a lot of times that's what happens. We'll see if that happens or not. The problem for the Eagles is they've already lost their Pro Bowl guard, right guard, um, and, uh, God, I, I can't, uh, Brandon Brooks. Brandon Brooks is lost with the pectoral strain. Who knows how long he's going to be out. He'll definitely be out for this game. I can tell you that. That brother will be out for this one um, without a doubt, which is a big blow because he is, you know, a Pro Bowl uh, guard. But yesterday, yesterday, we talking about practice. Not a game now. Not a game. We talking about practice. Their left tackle, Jordan Mulata, suffered an e knee injury. It sounds like it's an MCL strain. Not something that will keep him out, you know, the whole season. It may be three, four, five weeks. I don't have an exact number on that. But I can guarantee you that it'll be he won't be there on Monday night. Who they're going to be putting in there will be first-round pick um, Andre Dillard. Andre Dillard is now a three-year player who, for what I can say is, thus far, has left the Eagles something to desire, like a left tackle. He has been a very big disappointment, and he's going to get another opportunity, maybe with the new coaching staff, um, he'll have an opportunity to, to turn his career around. But thus far, he is on the Chaz Green type play. You know, he's the Eric Flowers of the Eagles. And I want to, uh, let me see if I can find this article real quick here. Because when, when I heard about this, I wanted to go back and try and get some background for you. The problem in football is you can get a great, great burst with free agents. But you can't build a roster with it, not for the long haul. The Eagles, to their credit, 
they got lightning in a bottle. They found the right free agents and signed them, and they made a run. The problem with the Eagles is they paid too much. They sacrificed too much, and the draft became a problem because ultimately you have to build the team through the draft. And, you know, as we look at guys, you know, we always talk about Taco Charlton, man. You know, Taco, we screwed up on Taco. We should have had, you know, T.J. Watt. Okay, yeah, we can say that. But we've hit on guys like CeeDee Lamb. We've hit on guys like Tyron Smith. Very few of our first-round picks have been bust, other than you can look at and say Taco, but uh, Taco was a second round. Here's what's crazy, and this is part of the problem for the Eagles right now, is they're drafting. Because from their 2019 draft, this is almost crazy. Um, We are seeing all this from the Eagles of 2019 class, which is on the verge of becoming a colossal bust. That beginning with general manager Howie Roseman uh, trickles down to former head coach Doug Peterson to the players themselves. Primarily first-round pick Andre Dillard, who will be getting the start, of course, on Monday night. And uh, second-round pick J.J. Ortega-Whiteside. The Eagles have had problem drafting receivers, by the way. In year three, both players are battling for their jobs in training camp. Dillard has a starting at left tackle and uh, wide receiver Ortega Whiteside just to make the 53-man roster. Both are facing long odds. The Eagles had a total of five picks in the 2019 draft. As of now, only one running back, Miles Sanders, a second-round pick, can be considered a success. The other two picks, okay, I don't even go on there any further. But basically, you look at this, and this is where the draft will make you or break you. You can go back to the 2009 draft of the Dallas Cowboys where we literally, within three years, not a single player was even in the NFL. And you could look at that, how that was a problem for us in the 2010, 11, and 12 season because you constantly have to get that new talent to end up elevating your team to continue replenishing the supply. And and that's where we are right now. We've done well. When you think about the Eagles with Ortega Whiteside and then turning around and getting Justin Jefferson and now this year again going through and trying to get, you know, another every year, every year, trying to get that receiver, trying to get that guy, that sets you back. And here's the problem for the Eagles is their roster is aging. It was bloated with high salaries and they had a lack of talent coming in through the draft. Now, I'm, I'm not one to go ahead and judge the Eagles, and I'm sure the Eagles are going to be mad at me. But in the end, you, you really only have one person to blame on that, and that is the Eagles themselves um, with Howie Roseman. Howie Roseman has literally screwed that team over to the point where there's a lack of talent. But, again, uh, what, what can I say? I, I'm a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan, and I'm happy that my team is okay. I, I'm really happy that my team is okay. But some people will say, Mark Holmes, you are just... What an idiot! What an idiot! And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Again, Bradley and I is now on the COVID list. Uh, pretty much at this point, testing positive. There's no chance for him to be back. Uh, the Eagles lose their starting left tackle, um, along with their also having Brandon Brooks out, as well as uh, Brandon Graham is out as well. So, that's what we got right now. And with that being said, you know how we roll. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. And I will catch you guys later. Have a great day and be safe out there. See you tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, where we'll be talking about the Cowboys versus the Eagles. Peace.